Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a really fun way to use this flower basket die set and turn it into airplane box cards. Aren't they fun? I love how these turned out. In fact, these might be my favorite cards that I've ever made. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a pilot. So, uh, so this was an extra fun project for me. I started with the Linda Canassi uh, card in a box flower basket die set here. And I hope you'll join us this month. The whole team is making different projects using this same die set. I'll have links on my blog so that you can check them all out. Every project is totally different. It's really cool. So the first thing that I'm going to do for my uh, airplane card here is to cut out my pieces. I just sandwich the die and the cardstock on my um, cutting plates and then run them through my Big Shot here. You probably don't want to watch me cut them all out, but if you are unfamiliar with the uh, Big Shot, it works just like that. Very simple. So I went ahead and cut out all my other pieces off camera for you. I've got the handle here and I cut five of these. And then I reserved two of the inside pieces. And then these are the struts that would normally go across the inside of the box. I cut four of these. We'll turn these into the wings and the tail. I cut two of the leaves. These are the long skinny leaves to be my propeller. And then the flower center I cut out of silver paper. That'll be the engine block. For the fuselage or the body of the airplane, I cut two pieces of the outside box. And then these last few dies here are not included in the set. This is a diamond that was in my stash. If you don't have a diamond shape, um, you can just cut a two inch square and then cut it in half diagonally and then clip the edges off. You're gonna need two diamonds. And then I've got a set of nesting circle dies and I've got my five smallest ones. They range from one and a half inches down to one half inch. So I cut one each of the one and a half, one and a quarter and one inch circles and then I cut two each of the three quarter and the half inch circles. And I have all of these measurements on my blog as well as um, these diagrams here so that you'll see how we modify the pieces. It's very simple though. So the first thing that we're going to do is modify our two box pieces. They'll be the, the fuselage or the body of the, the airplane. Notice that when you cut them out it will emboss some score lines for you. It makes it really easy to assemble your cards. Um, but we do want to trim this down a little bit, otherwise the, the airplane would be too tall and it, it looks funny. Um, so we're going to take an inch off the bottom of these two pieces. So far, easy modification, right? Then we'll grab two of those struts. And these will make up the tail. Um, again, these have embossed score lines in them and a couple notches. Let me show you the die here. So it will emboss an edge at the bottom and at the top. Actually, this would normally be the side, but uh, for this purpose, it's going to be the top and the bottom. And it also puts some little marks, some notches at the top. And I'm just going to cut from the notch at the top down to the score line at the bottom. It's very easy to, to see when you have it in your cutter there. And you don't have to do any special measurements. You can just use the, the lines that are already embossed when you cut it out. Um, before I cut them, I wanna flip these over, so, or flip one over so that I've got them back to back. When you die cut pieces, you tend to get a, a top piece that's pretty and the backside sometimes gets the, um, the texture from your cut plate embossed into it. Um, these two, I, I want to keep them identical so that when I glue them together, the two pretty pieces will be facing outward. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on both sides. So I'm lining up the notch on the other side and cutting down to the score line at the bottom. And those will make up the, uh, the tail. Now we're going to cut our horizontal stabilizers. So I grabbed two of the little pieces that we cut off and then I'll line them up about one and one eighth of an inch from the uh, large edge. 
and I'll cut those down and those make up our stabilizers. Um, notice that they do have score lines in them. Those score lines will be helpful later when we go to assemble the tail. And you can discard the rest of those pieces. Now for the wings, we're gonna take the other two pieces and we'll just measure over a quarter inch from one side and a half inch from the other side. And then we'll cut down to that score line again. And notice that I flipped it so that they're back to back again. This is gonna give me two mirror image pieces. And I picked a quarter inch and a half inch just because those are the marks on my trimmer. They're easy to line up. So I just put the top corner one quarter of an inch in and then I cut down to the score line. And then I can flip it over and do the same thing at a half an inch. So a half an inch at the top and then line it up with the, uh, the score line at the bottom. Simple, right? And no real measuring. And again, their mirror image. Now for our propeller, um, I cut two of those leaves. You can use two, three, or four, depending on the type of airplane that you want. We're just gonna overlap them and trim off the edges. And I cut off eh, roughly three eighths of an inch or so, maybe a quarter inch, it's up to you. Just want a flat edge. And then I'm using some PVA glue and I will overlap them by about half an inch or so. You wanna make sure that they're lined up fairly straight across. And then we'll let that dry. Now for the vertical stabilizers, we're gonna take those two diamonds and we're just gonna score 3 eighths of an inch in from one side. And we'll do the same thing to both pieces. So just 3 eighths of an inch, and then again, 3 eighths of an inch. Easy, right? I'd say on a scale of one to five, the difficulty of this card is maybe three, three and a half. What we're gonna do right now is the hardest part, and it's not hard. Uh, we'll take one of those diamonds and put it on the top of the tail, and then we're just gonna mark the, the top and the bottom of that because we want to cut a slot to allow the, the diamonds to poke up. So I'm going to take my craft mat and a little craft knife and a ruler and I'm going to cut out a slot here. And I don't want it to be just um, a very narrow piece. I want to actually cut out probably a sixteenth of an inch. So I'll trim out a little bit from either side of that line. And that's going to give me lots of room for the, uh, the stabilizer to wiggle around so that when you fold it flat to go into the envelope, you have um, lots of room. It, it'll fold down flat for you and then it'll also pop back up nicely. So I'm just going to test it out here. I'll put both pieces in and make sure that there's plenty of room for them. They're gonna end up nesting together like that. And we're not gluing anything down yet because we still need to stamp the pieces. But I'm just gonna give you a little preview here of how the uh, tail comes together. And you see why we want the bottom piece there. When you have your stabilizers in place, you'd have some ugly edges on the bottom, lots of overlapping. So we'll put that, that bottom piece just to clean up the, the bottom. Now let's work on the cabin. So I've got a piece of clear acetate and I'm gonna take one of my handles and I'll line it up and then using a Sharpie, I'm gonna draw a line about halfway uh, between the in, inner edges and the outer edges there, just so I have a lip that I can use to glue the acetate down. And when I'm working with acetate, instead of using wet glue, I try to use this double stick tape, something strong, score tape or this sequang tape is great. And I'm just gonna 
uh, go around the edges here where the window will be. When you're curving this tape, it's, it's kind of hard. The release paper makes it difficult to, to curve the tape itself. So what I do is I'll get it started and then I'll peel up the release paper and then I'll lift and push and lift and push and kind of fold the, the double stick tape on itself. And then as long as you get the uh, release paper out of the way, it folds nicely. But you also kind of want to keep it in place a little bit so you're not sticking your fingers into it. But you see how it'll just fold down flat there on itself? Then we can remove that other piece and stick the window down. Now I'm going to grab my PVA glue and I keep it in a fine line bottle. That just helps me control how much glue that I put out at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and glue another handle on top of this. But I fold back the edges there. I do not want to glue the tabs together. They'll, they'll fold opposite of each other on the final piece. And I like the PVA glue for something like this because it gives me wiggle room. But when I'm assembling the box card, it's easier if you use the, the strong double stick tape like this because it sets up instantly. You don't have to wait for the glue to dry. So for all of my tabs on the box card, I'm going to use this double stick tape. Like I said, you can use the wet glue, but you have to hold and pinch it and wait for it to dry before you move on to the next part. So I just like the, the double stick tape for this. I'm going to go ahead and fold back each of my tabs and then add the tape. And remember those two center pieces that we saved? I'm going to go ahead and put them back in place and I'm going to use some invisible tape just to, to hold them down. Now you're not going to see a whole lot of these two pieces, so I'm not worried about the invisible tape. It, it really is almost Im impossible to see unless you look close. Um, if you don't have invisible tape or if, um, if you don't like the way that looks, you can just go ahead and cut two more sets of these and uh, tape them in place with washi or whatever you have and then just glue them back to back like we did with the acetate window. But like I said, this invisible tape is, is pretty invisible and you won't see a whole lot of these pieces once they're in place. So I've got my cabin pieces all put together. One has an acetate window and two have their uh, center pieces taped back in place. Now we can score the other pieces of our box card and, and put the adhesive on those. So for the fuselage, you'll notice there are sc three score lines. I'm only folding over two of the tabs. Um, I'm folding it at the very center and then the tab at the very end. You can ignore the uh, the score that's in the halfway between one of those edges. For the wings, we're going to fold down one side, the, the bigger side, the, the inside of our wings. And then we're going to make sure that we're putting the adhesive on um, just the bottom pieces. So make sure you have them laid out mirror image and then just put the adhesive on the bottom. For the tail, we can go ahead and put the horizontal stabilizers in place, but we haven't stamped the top yet, so we're not going to stick those down. Uh, these two pieces, they do have that uh, the embossed tab there, but we're not going to fold it. Don't worry about the fold line there. It is great for a reference so that you can place them both an equal amount in. And I'm just going to slide that diamond in place there just for a second so I can uh, line up the tabs here. You want them to be in front of your diamond or your uh, vertical stabilizer. And you want to make sure that they line up the same on the left and right side. And you see how the back's kind of ugly? That's why we really want that other piece. But we're not going to glue it down until we have our stamped pieces here. Uh, 
I am using the Inked Roads Inked Girl. This girl is Amanda, and she's not named after any Amanda. She happens to be named after me, which is super awesome. And I love this set. She's a, a traveler. I thought she'd make a perfect pilot. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a pilot. So this set is extra, extra awesome to me. I grabbed one of the sentiments. This one says, bonjour. And I'm going to stamp this onto the vertical uh, stabilizer here. I'm just lining it up in my Misty. And I want to emboss it. So the first thing I'm going to do is prep it with the anti-static powder tool. Then I'll stamp it with VersaFine Clair ink. And especially with sentiments, I just rub lightly with my finger. It, I'm not pushing hard at all. If you push really hard, you can smush the letters down and then it becomes hard to read. So a lot of times I just double stamp it, but with very light pressure. And the um, ink stays wet long enough that I can grab the uh, clear embossing powder and then I'll heat set it. And I'm using tweezers to hold them because it's, it's heat right there by my fingers. Uh, so it makes it easier to not burn yourself. For this second side here, I wanna go ahead and clean my stamp off so I can move it. If I don't clean it first, I'll get ink all over my fingers and then that ends up getting on the, the white cardstock here and it wouldn't be pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, move it, and then I'm gonna make sure that I line it up so that it's the same height as the other piece. Uh, remember, we're stamping on the mirror image here, so that's why it's not just in the exact same place. And I'll repeat the same process, anti-static powder tool, stamping twice with my um, VersaFine Claire ink, and then I'll grab it with the tweezers and I can sprinkle on my clear embossing powder and then heat it with my heat gun. It gives you a nice raised finish with a little bit of shine. And then I'm just gonna clean off my stamp and put it away. And for a second, I thought about stamping on the fuselage but I changed my mind. I decided not to. I decided I wanted to stamp on the back of my tail instead. I grabbed this sentiment. This sentiment is super cute. It says, little by little, one travels far. And I'm placing it high on the back of the tail here because I want to leave enough room to write my message on my card when I give this away. And I'm just doing the same thing here. I'm gonna emboss it the same way I did the other pieces. And just applying the lightest pressure with your fingertips when you stamp it down. That way you can read the sentiment clearly. Okay, so now every plane needs its pilot, and I thought Amanda would be perfect, but this video is getting pretty long, so I don't want to make you sit here and watch me color. So I went ahead and I stamped and embossed her, and then I colored her in with my Copic markers. Notice that she is holding an itinerary. I decided to turn it into a flight computer. Every pilot has a flight computer. I just used a quarter inch hole punch, cut out a piece of cardstock, and then glued it on top and then I colored the whole thing silver. Usually uh, flight computers are a little silver. Um, it's a manual computer, it's not a real computer. And then because I colored it with Copics, the back uh, bleeds through so I cut a silhouette at the same time and I cut her out with my scan and cut. That was easier for me. Now we can work on the nose. I'm just going to add a little pop of color in a couple places. Uh, the two half-inch circles, I'm going to color them red because I want the nose of the airplane to be red. And then the one and a quarter inch circle, or I'm sorry, this is the one inch circle. The one inch circle is red as well. I used the same red markers that I colored her shirt with. And I also added a little red to the tip of the propellers. 
and I'm taking a black marker for the three quarter inch circles. Those two are going to lay on top of each other, but I wanted to add a little more depth behind. Uh, those are going to be the engine pieces. And I also grabbed a gold brad. This is a three quarter inch brad, and I'm using a darker red marker to color the tip of that. It's alcohol ink, so it'll stick just fine. If you're worried about it rubbing off, you can always um, add a little bit of diamond glaze or a clear coat of embossing powder to that as well. And then I'm just stacking up the pieces. So the, the two red pieces and the two black pieces are the same size, um, but I added extras of those so that we'd have a little more dimension. And now I've got a scrap circle that I folded in half twice so I could find the center. I used that to punch out the center of the first circle. And then I'm just going to start layering them and punching the other circles as I go. I'm not worried about being perfect. I just want to get them mostly centered. And you wouldn't be able to punch through all of those layers at the same time, at least not easily. So I just kind of stack up one or two at a time and then punch through those and then layer on the next bit. Don't forget to punch through your propeller and you can use, like I said, uh, two to four pieces, but just be careful when you're punching through it because you're pretty close to the edges there. If you do happen to tear it, you can just repair it with some tape from the back. Nobody will see it. Then we'll go ahead and stack those pieces and set them aside. And now we can start assembling the box. Home stretch. Okay, so the first thing that you do when you assemble a box card is put the two uh, big pieces together, your two frame pieces, and you're only going to attach one half. Uh, we'll attach the other half at the end. We'll close it all up at the end. Normally, this is where you'd start putting in the struts, but because we're turning it, it into an airplane, we're going to put our wings on first um, so that our struts can go on top of the those pieces if they need to. So I'm just deciding uh, which way I want the wings to go and remember to make sure that they mirror each other. And see how much faster it goes when you use this double stick tape rather than glue. You don't have to wait for it to set up. You can just press it down and move on to the next part. Now that we've stamped the tail, we can go ahead and finish assembling it. I'm going to glue those two diamond pieces together not the tabs, just the top part. Then we can open it up and slide it into place. Notice that they stick out just a little bit, so I'll trim those edges. And that fits perfectly, so now I can glue it down. Here I'm using the PVA. You don't have to, I mean you could use the, the same double back tape if you wanted, but the PVA is going to hold up just fine. I'm not going to be moving this particular part around a lot, and I'm going to back it with the bottom piece. Um, so I like the wiggle room that it gives me. And I'm going to go ahead and fold over this edge, and if I put the bottom on with that, that edge, that tab there, it would make a really thick piece, and it won't fold as nicely when it goes into the envelope. So I cut off that bottom tab off the, uh, the bottom piece of the tail. And then I'll just go ahead and glue that in place. Again, the PVA gives me a little bit of wiggle room there. And now I can use that double back tape for the bottom tab there so that we can finish assembling the box card here. And be careful with that tape. <laughs> I stuck it to my wing there on accident. Now I'm making sure that that vertical stabilizer, the diamond pieces, fold back and forth easily so that it'll lay down flat when it goes in the envelope. And then I'm going to stick it to the back of the card. And I'm going to test that hinge and make sure that folds nicely back and forth too. Now we want to go ahead and stick our nose in place. Because that brad is a three-quarter inch brad, if you try to stick it in at the end, uh, the, the first piece of the cabin is going to be pretty close to it. 
and you'd have a hard time opening it up. So it's easier to stick it in place now. I'm grabbing a pair of uh, brass washers. They'll just protect the, the fuselage, the airplane. When you spin the propeller around, you don't want to accidentally tear and make that hole any bigger. So those brads will help, or the washers will help. And now we can start putting our cabin together. The very first piece is actually going to be like an extension of the nose. So I'm going to trim off a half inch from the bottom so that the, uh, the tab doesn't stick out the bottom of the airplane because I want it to sit pretty low in the box. And you see that tab where we first assembled the two long pieces together? I'm going to stick this guy all the way down at the bottom right at that the edge of that tab there. So it's not at the very front of the card. It sits back about, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch. Then we're going to go ahead and stick our window piece in place. This is the piece that has the acetate. And we'll move it up and back a little bit. So we want to make sure that we'll be able to see the pilot's eyes when she's sitting in her plane. But we don't have to worry um, the next piece is going to be a little higher, so if her head is sticking up above the window, that's okay. You just want to be able to see her eyes here. And notice that on these tabs, I'm only peeling off the release paper for one side. It just makes it easier in the end. I'll, I'll show you a trick here. So now we'll take the next piece. This is the, uh, the window that does not have acetate. And I'm going to stick it up at the top of the box card. And I'm just making sure that her head will fit inside the plane at this point. And this one is a little bit further back. I left about, I don't know, five eighths or three quarters of an inch between the two window tabs there. You want a lot of room so you can see your pilot. And then this last tab is going to start coming back down a little bit and it's about a quarter of an inch from the very back of the plane. So now I'm gonna lay these tabs flat and I'm making sure that the bottom is um, lined up even or parallel to the bottom of the card. And I'll peel off those tabs and then I can stick these all down at once. And that keeps your card uh, nice and square. Now, I could have peeled off this back piece, but sometimes when you have this many layers and you go to put the, the very edge of it down, something will get askew. So I tend to do that piece separately at the end. And now we have an airplane. Pretty cool, right? We just need our pilot. Um, again, I cut out a silhouette of her with my scan and cut at the same time I cut her out just because the Copic marker that I colored her with bleeds through. And you might notice that her sunglasses have some extra shine. I, I put a little glaze of, or a little coat of diamond glaze on there. It makes them look like fun sunglasses. And I'm gonna measure and I will cut off the bottom of her. That's why I didn't bother coloring the bottom in either. And I've got a double layer of foam tape. I'll use that to stick her inside the plane. This way she's not flat up against that same piece. It gives you a little more dimension. And I'll play with her, make sure she's exactly where I want her to be. And then we are almost done. It's pretty fun, right? You can see the airplane now. So I've got just one more thing to do, and this is optional, but I think it's uh, pretty helpful and cleans up the edges. We're gonna round the corners, and if you have a corner rounder, you can take off the guide because these are not all 90 degree angles. Um, or you'd have to take off the guide to use that punch. But I just opted to use my scissors because I want a smaller cut here. And I do have one tip if you're going to cut with the scissors, just try to cut from the same direction. So here I'm going from front to back. And then when I come to the other half of the card, 
I'm going to flip it over so that I can still cut from front to back. That way your angles all end up looking the same. If you switch directions, they'll never end up looking the same. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I just, at least for me, I can't get it right. Um, so if I go in the same direction every time, they'll always end up looking just fine. You won't notice. And then that finishes it up. Can you see the difference there? I think uh, rounding the edges really gives you a nicer finished look. Isn't she fun? The propeller spins. She's a pop-up card, a box card. I love it. This actually is probably my favorite set of cards I've ever made. <laughs> So this is the silver card, and I didn't want to film this one for you because all of that mirror paper would be terribly hard to watch. Uh, notice that the back of it, I used gray paper so that I could write my sentiment. Also, I gave him two propellers because he's a warbird. And for my pilot, I used this caffeinated cat from the rabbit hole designs. He's holding a cup of coffee, so I wanted to cover that up. I just made a flight stick. I used um, some silver paper and I cut out the stem and that same half inch circle that I used for the nose and I just covered up his coffee cup with it. And you're probably wondering what size envelope this fits into. It fits perfectly into an A7 envelope or a six inch square envelope. It would even fit into an A6 envelope if you were to cut the tab off the wings and the tail, just shorten those up a little bit and it would fit in there. So here's a better look. Notice that on my envelopes I did end up sponging on a little bit of blue uh, ink, some clouds there. You just want to give a hint of what's coming. You don't want to give away the whole card, but you don't want naked envelopes either. I love this warbird. I come from a navy family, so of course he has to have navy insignias. And I've got plenty of room there to write my sentiment. Isn't it fun? And when you take it out, you'll have to fold it a little bit, but it tends to pop right into place. And I've got my little Amanda here in her little Cessna type airplane. I'm not sure if you can see, but that, that white cardstock that I cut the plane out of has silver sparkle in it. So I didn't, I didn't add any more glitter or anything else because there's actually quite a bit of sparkle to it just doesn't show up on camera very well. But there you go. A pair of fun airplane card uh, box cards here for you. And you'd never know that they came from a, a flower box die, right? I hope that you will head over to my blog. I've got links to all of the products that I used. And I've also got links to the rest of the Linda Canasi design team. This month we are all making something different using the same die set. And I think you'll be surprised by how many different ideas that we've come up with. Here is a link to a few more videos that I've got for you. And if you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notifications every time I've got a new video. Thanks for watching.